He's gonna take us from NF channel combos. So, uh, you take a look. It's even it's 30, like 40 minutes long, but we're not gonna check it all of it. And I'm gonna get the little details. I'm gonna try to pick his brain with this one, see who he is and stuff. Go ahead, if you're new to your channel, like and subscribe. And um, let's go. I never know what to expect, man. Putting out music is, uh, I always tell people, like one of the most exciting and most like nerve wracking times for me just because I put so much time and like emotion into this thing. Right. And then I release it to the world to basically give their opinion of it. It's pretty tough. Um, And so I love it, but at the same time, I just never know what it's going to do. So I'm just thankful that the fans showed up and bought the records and excited to tour. So. So it's a case of always expect the unexpected. Well, here's what I do. I actually, I'm a very negative person. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I try to convince myself if I think the worst will happen, if anything better than the worst happens, I'll feel better. Okay. Um, that's actually a lie that I tell myself. <laughs> but I do kind of live like that sometimes. Where I'm like, oh. You know, there is a good chance it won't do good because of this, or this might happen, or whatever. Um, But the truth is, it definitely, like, it's just a hard thing to do sometimes, like, putting out an album. You can tell he's his own critic. He's the worst critic. Like, he thinks a lot before he do stuff, and he cares about his fans a lot. You can tell he cares about them. So when he put things out, I think he just feel like, you know, Biting, I don't know. Probably, uh, man, hopefully, oh, people like it. Oh, cool. Whew. All right, so they gonna like this one. So he he's, he's a very smart guy. Well, especially when it's as personal as it as it is, or any any kind of artist mm. that I feel like you're you're putting something out there for everyone to look at mm-hmm. and have an opinion of. Right, and so it's just kind of sometimes nerve-wracking to do that. But I'm glad that it seems like the fans liked it and the fan base is growing and just the shows and stuff, so it's good. So, I mean, as I just mentioned, you know, um, Bookie's favorite was Chance to be number one. You you managed to get to number one, and there was all this controversy where he went on Twitter to say, you know, that people wanted him to kill himself, all that kind of stuff. Did he reach out to you at all? Do I have a conversation to congratulate you or anything like that? No, I don't. I don't know him personally, but I will say I feel like the world nowadays is very. I just don't get like the internet and right. You know what I mean? Like people can say whatever they want about mm-hmm. him. I don't. I don't know him personally, but I think he's a very talented artist. And I think sometimes people get carried away with like stuff they write about people. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? If if people were writing that kind of stuff about me. And I kind of got my first taste of some of that with this album. It's just, I, I don't know. I don't like it, you know. It's I, don't, I don't like it when they do it to other people. I don't like it when they do it to me. So, I mean, it's pretty dangerous. Yeah. But I, I think people... Like, it's a lot of people they hate so much. Like, you can't win. You can't lose. Like, I do this, but you want me to do this. But it's like, I don't know. Everybody have their own opinion, though, so. Hey, I feel where you're coming from, man. People, a you lot can't of make people just make happy. it like this joke now, you know? Like, well, you know, it's kind of what you signed up for as an artist, and I guess mm-hmm. I don't really think of it that way. But It's interesting you say that, because this week there was this whole thing about Andrew Luck retiring from the NFL because of injury at 29 years old, and it's like loads of people were booing him when really he was just looking after himself, but they were saying you knew what you were signing up for. But I don't understand where the human compassion is in that way, is that element. And I guess you guys feel the same th- same way. Well, I think the internet has just become a place where because everyone can give their opinion, there's no conversations anymore. You know what I mean? It's just like opinions. One way. Personally, I don't think people should have been bashing him like they did about his out. If you don't like an out, I mean, I'm just... I'm not going to go on someone's page as an adult and right. like, I know it's not just adults, but I'm not going to go on someone's page and be like, your album was terrible. Yeah. Like that just like doesn't make sense to me. 
And then obviously with you getting to number one, what I just started to notice with all these headlines about you being number one, it was... I think the artist feel when somebody putting their heart and their soul into an album, right? They take months, maybe a year, to write a whole album because you gotta write every eight songs, whatever. You gotta write from the end, the beginning to the end, the chorus, the bridge. Then you gotta think about the beat you're gonna put on it. Like that take time. Then you put it out there, and people just shits on it. That's tough. That's tough, man. He's the artist that you, you don't know, and he got to number one, this mysterious guy. Do you look at yourself as a mysterious guy, as an underdog? I personally like that people don't know who I am to some extent. <laughs> I mean, this is actually a shock to me coming here and playing Germany for like 4,000 people. Yeah, because I, you know, I don't come here that often, and so to be able to travel the world and do that. But in this, even, even in the U.S., I think if you walk around to, I was just telling someone this the other day, if you went to like a, a city, maybe I'm not playing a show there, and you walked into a restaurant and you were like, hey, have you ever heard of NF? I think most people would be like, who? You know, they wouldn't know. But I could go, no, I'm, I'm telling you. But if I went there and played a show, you know, maybe three to 5,000 people or more, depending on the city, would come to the show. And so I don't mind that. I like not doing tons of this kind of stuff like press but still being able to be an artist and do the stuff that i love to do mm -hmm. we love being able to do this with you yeah we love having this conversation with you yeah no i'm just saying just he's so chill and humble like man i just like he had to stick, he like he had to stick to himself like you know you know it's just something for me when i put out my album perception um a couple years ago i had never experienced interviews like really not not like real interviews so when i started doing radio interviews and stuff i was like i don't know man it was just a weird experience for me and it was exhausting i'd never i'd never toured that much i'd never answered the same questions every day or whatever yeah. and i'm also like a pretty deep person so sometimes i was like oh man i wish like if i'm doing interviews it could go deeper things like that you know so that was just like a stressful um different experience for me altogether um, mm -hmm. but back to your original question which i don't remember exactly what it was because we got off of it but um uh, yeah yeah underdog. um yeah i think sometimes maybe i am the underdog or just the overlooked okay uh, yeah. artist and i'm fine with that at this point i'm getting to a place now where i'm just like i'm just gonna keep doing what i'm doing i think the fans love it and that's what matters so You've mentioned it a few times already, you're quite deep. And obviously, listen to your music, you know that, and a lot of it is very vulnerable. Is, is there ever a point where you just think to yourself, do you know what, I really shouldn't be putting this out, I really, or you're scared to? Or was there a point and somehow you managed to kick the doors down and just be like, you know what, I'm going to do this? Because it's obviously working. Mm -hmm. I think being 28 now, as you get older, you look at life differently. Mm -hmm. um, so the only thing I would say is, I don't know if there's like massive regrets or anything too specific that I would go into, but I would just say it is interesting to me. Like when you are an artist and you write music, or if you're a person who writes journals about your life or, or, or books or whatever it is, it really is like that's kind of what music is for me. When I go back and listen to my first album, or which I don't do very much at all, but every once in a while, like probably once in the past year, I like went back and listened to some of my old music, and I was like, "Oh my god, this is, <laughs> this is like that was something I wanted to get into." No, no, yeah, 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 no, like, but it is like a journal of my life, and sometimes I'll like I might probably listen to something and be like, mm, "I feel like I didn't understand this then," or "Why did I say that like this? Do I think do I feel that way this way anymore? Is this you know what I mean?" An example would be. The song about uh, my mom dying when I was like 18 years old. The song that I wrote, I don't regret writing it. Still emotional to listen to. I mm -hmm. think, I don't know how old I was when I, when I put that out. Maybe I was like 24, 25. I'm not sure. Um, but being 28 now, looking at that song, I think I just look at that differently. Right. That scenario. So I wouldn't say I regret the song. I would say I have more 
empathy and compassion for my mom than I did when I wrote the song. Mm. You know, I felt sad when I wrote the song, but also a lot of anger mixed in, and I think I still have some, some of those emotions for sure. But now, what's well, evident on the new album? Because there's there's the record yeah. where you cry at the end talking about your mom. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was one of the most emotional songs I'd ever written. Mm. Um, what song now is this? It's just kind of like I think because I'm older and I look at life with more of an open mind instead of just what I'm thinking all the time. And I look at that scenario and I think about I think about my mom and like her position that she you know she was in. You know what I mean? A lot of people I think get addicted to things because they're running from something, um, and I don't know everything. You know, personal about my mom, but I just have a lot more like empathy and compassion because I think my mom had a lot of things she struggled with inside, and I kind of related to my own life, doing this as a career and like having one of the roughest mental years last year of my life. You know, I mean, so just 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 like to interject with a side note, that's why I relate to your music so much because yeah. I have my own issues with my own mother yeah. who has an addiction. And it's crazy. All right, we're gonna. I will think we're doing um, probably ten segments, ten parts. If you guys want that, we can we can chop it up to just like a forty minute long video. So we can do part one, part two, part three, and stuff. If you guys want that, let me know down below. If not, we can move to something else. But um, but yeah, if your boy L six, uh, subscribe to me on the road to thirty and help this channel grow. And um, L6 is out, y'all. Yeah.